So Wolfgang, which direction do we point it at? I know that's a very silly question, but in terms of orienting it at the sun, is there a particular part of this, uh, the frame or the or the the collector that needs to be oriented due south? Or right, that's a very good question because it's very important. Uh, this cooking place is actually on the south side of the reflector, and this is uh, sorry on the north side. Yes. And this is the south side. So, so we can orientation here is due due north. To south, and this is due north. Uh -huh. Theoretically, you can look from the center of the dish through this hole. You would be able to see the polar star over here. So that way is the orientation. And that when it's placed properly, this will be level, so that your cooking vessel is not like this or like that. Yeah. So you can cook very nicely. Yeah. Great. Okay, so let's get it oriented and level. I'll turn this off and give you a so hand. So we've set it all up now, and as Wolfgang explained, this part needs to face due north, and this has to face due south. And we don't do that with a compass, we do it by eye, more or less, because you never quite know if the compass is getting thrown off by some iron in the ground. And um, how we set it up is we get our spirit level. And the spirit level, first of all, we make sure this way is level, here, by propping some wood underneath. Then we get this one here level. And if, we, if this is level, then we know that this is our axis of rotation. This is going to be parallel to the Earth's axis, which is what we want. So we can do that by setting up these different things here, fixing this, this screw point here, and there's another one on that leg there. So then, what we did is we pushed it round until the sensor caught the sunlight and started to track so the focal point turns onto the bottom of this pot stand and then when it's finished its tracking you can see how far on or off the light is and at the moment it's pretty good it's on because what what we then did initially when it tracked the point wasn't hitting so well so we undid this clamp here and the clamp up here as well and that could change the angle of the dish here so we get it optimized for our time of year it was at the beginning it was too far optimized for winter so now we we can change the angle of the dish and then by fixing one side of the uh, the dish and leave well this this other side's fixed and this one's loose you can actually flex the shape of the dish and bend it and that if you can see it makes the focal point wider or shorter and wider and shorter this way so by fixing this side and flexing the other and by fixing the other side and flexing this we can play with the shape of the focal point and squeeze it down so that eventually the ideal is all of the light is hitting that disc so that when Wolfie opens the opens the gap it all goes through onto the bottom of our pot and that's how hot is that up there pretty hot pretty <laughs> hot you won't stay long. So should we put should we put some water on to boil and have a cup of tea? Right. Let's see how long it takes. Right. Great. <laughs> okay, so I think we take now we got the infrared thermometer. If we switch it on, it will show us the temperature of any surface. We can only use black surfaces. If you put it on a shiny surface, it will not tell the correct thing. See it's showing 33, but the vessel is boiling. So it has to be a black or otherwise uh, infrared black. Or matte? Surface. No, it has to be black in the infrared wavelength. Ah, I see, right. Not shiny. So now we measure from down here into the focus. And we see 100 and 120 maximum. But isn't that a shiny surface too? No, I painted the black, uh, the ah. bottom of the vessel has to be painted black. Okay, right. Otherwise it will not absorb. Oh, okay, yeah. The light. Good. So that's 130 degrees.
120 degree was the bottom of the vessel. Okay. At maximum. Okay. Because it's water inside, it will not become hotter. Right. But if we, we had a lump of... And take a picture and then we close this. Yeah. And then we have to look at the temperature of this... Uh, I was going to ask, if, if it wasn't... If it wasn't go higher. If it wasn't water in there, if it was a lump of metal, we'd get a higher temperature. Right, right. Good. Because we don't get the phase change. Yes. That's where all the energy is going after we pass 100. It goes it into goes the steam. Into the steam. Yeah. Now you can take a picture of the boiling water. Hello, boiling water. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. So that's after 20 minutes. 23 minutes. 23 minutes. So now we've steamed up the lens of the camera. <laughs> we should go and get some pasta or something and <laughs> put it in. So let's see what the uh, what the uh, temperature is when we when we don't have water um, taking the heat away. So we wait a little bit for it to heat up. Yeah. So this is on an aluminium plate. Uh, it is a stainless steel. Oh, a stainless steel plate. Okay. Right, it should. Let it go higher a little bit. So we've got 146 after a few seconds, so we'll just wait a while and then we'll see what it looks like after it's heated okay, up. So we just came over and we've changed our cooking strategy. Now we're going to have an iron plate here. Just a simple, simple iron plate with handles. And this is going to get charged up here in the... Uh, ow, that's already getting... Wow, that's already a few seconds. It's been on there and now it's too hot to touch. And this, because it doesn't have boiling water on top of it, like the pan of water did, is going to be able to reach much higher temperatures because the water would be losing the temperature through the phase change uh, with the steam going off. Whereas this, um, will, Wolfgang says, get up to about 400 degrees Celsius. And then we can cook chapatis and things directly on it. And what would happen if you had a larger plate here? Well, it would lose more heat. It would lose more heat. So the temperature will drop. But you don't need 400 degrees to cook chapatis. Yeah. So you'd have a you'd have a hot center and then it would conduct yeah, out to the sides. Yeah, but and the center will be less hot also. Oh, okay. Because the uh, the area on which it will lose energy mm. is larger. But then you have bigger space for cooking. Yeah. So at it, lower temperature. So if your temperature is enough. Yes. Yeah, it still would be all right. And so what do you what what kind of temperature do you get on a metal plate over a wood fire? Well, uh, for baking chapati, like you need about 300 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it needs to be high. You need at high temperatures. You need it. Okay, good to know. Mm. And uh, lots of nice iron oxide in the diet. <laughs> 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 okay. Yummy. Okay, now we have Breakfast. placed the iron plate, and now it has heated up to its maximum. We'll have a look, and it's 425 degrees Celsius. Wow. <laughs> in the center pretty good. So, time to cook some chapatis. Whoa, I'm not, yeah, getting, can feel the I'm not getting anywhere near that. <laughs> <laughs> good. How much? 420. 420, that's pretty good. And what do we have before with our... When we measured this before, when the trap was shut, we only got about 150, didn't we? Yeah. But you had a thought on why that was? Yeah, I think that was because it's not yet completely oxidized. And then it's still the effect of the shiny sheet, uh, uh, stainless steel sheet. And uh, in infrared, it, it's reflective still. And then it will not show the proper tem uh, temperature. This instrument will only work for uh, surfaces which are emitting 95% of the radiation of the infrared. So when this is black, when this is black, we'll get much better readings off of right, off right. of this. Mm. Okay, just have to let it rust and cook a little bit more. Wow, there we go. Great. Thank you. Okay. If you want a comfortable cooking height, you can s install your reflector like this. Um, here we have some steps leading up. So these are the potatoes simmering away, but the um, the trap is actually shut. So this is just the low heat setting. What happens if we open it?
they start to boil. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Great. That's lunch. So this is something you can do when you're not busy designing and building these. Cooking. You can come and enjoy cooking on them. <laughs> right. So what's for lunch? Omelette. Omelette. Mm. Great. So here we have the small, uh, baking oven connected to the 8 square meter Scheffler reflector. Uh, here we have only a short period of sun, so in the morning it's automatically facing the west, east. Uh, it will rotate until noon, heat up the oven, and whenever we want to bake, we can bake here up to noon time or a little bit later even. So your oven's always hot and waiting if there's yeah, any exactly. sun. Yeah, exactly. So it's very convenient that way. You don't have to decide. Whenever you want to bake, you just do it. Temperature is going up to 350 degree maximum. Wow. That's quite good. It, even as a, if you have a longer sunshine day, you have a possibility of having a storage here. You add stones and then uh, it will have a more constant temperature, even when in the afternoon there are some clouds or something. Wow. Yeah, you don't add stones. The design is such that That's the stones are already inside. <laughs> <laughs> you don't start carrying stones. Okay. <laughs> It has a storage for, for And how, how many meters squared is this? Eight? This, this is eight square meter and it will just, uh, like the other ones, it will rotate with the sun. This is morning position and slowly it will rotate like this. And this is automatic, so it's when automatic. when you're indoors doing something else, if the sun comes out, it'll automatically right. track down and focus through this yeah, focal through this point here. here. And there's a glass and behind the glass you see some folded iron sheets. This is where the heat is getting absorbed and then transferred to the air. Mm and the air is naturally circulating inside. Okay, great. And this is 12 years old? Yeah, and this is the power That's supply for the tracking. It's directly connected with the motor. Here is the sensor, which is uh, if when the uh, sun is falling onto it, it will rotate. Mm -hmm. If the sun is not falling, it will stop from the shadow here. Okay. In uh, at noon time, it will hit the switch. The switch will reverse the motor and then it will go back into the morning until it hits again the switch and then it will stop and wait for the next sunrise. Like okay. Very practical. And is this, is this similar to the sorts of systems that, that you built in India? Right, right. This yeah. is a more or less a type of system. Here is 8 square meter. In India many of the systems have 10 square meters and industrial systems normally have 16 square meters. And what are the, what are the applications that they would use an 8 square meter or a 10 square meter for in India? It started with direct cooking, like here was a cooking place with a 30 litre vessel. Uh, later it shifted to steam cooking, like the reflectors would uh, boil water, remake steam, and the steam would be piped into the kitchen right. uh, to heat the food. Yeah. And later from the steam it came to industrial applications, because industries need a lot of steam. Yeah. And then we moved out to do the 16 square metre design. So you said in India they also have, um, have Chef Lemire's powering um, double jacket steam vessels for pasteurizing milk. Right, right, yeah. Right. Like the, quite a number of installations use this technology of double vessel. It was the original way of cooking there. So we just replaced the fossil steam with the solar steam. And they still have their gas or wood backup? Right, that was kept as backup. Because yeah. even there in India you have the monsoon, you have some days which are cloudy. Yeah. yeah. Great. So we'll see what the solar radiation data says for pool, whether or not it's going to be possible.
Fantastic. And so in India, how much does um, one of these systems for, for steam cost? Uh, like the large system for, let's say, put it the other way, uh, there was a company making it yeah. and they sell uh, 16 square meter reflectors for steam cooking and industrial application. They charged about 120,000 rupees for one 16 square meter reflector together with the system. So how much is that in euros? Uh, 120,000 uh, rupees is about 2,200 2,200 euros. euros. For a 16 square meter. So they sell one that's twice the size of this. This is eight square meters. So 16 square meters would be twice the size with the tracking system, with, with the steam system as well. I think so, like that, yeah. For 2,200 euros. Yeah. And that's what they make it and sell it for in India. So that is a very interesting technology. <laughs> Don't you think, guys? <laughs> Yeah, on the this one, side, yeah. because this is like for Ghana. Okay, so <laughs> next. <laughs> the seasonal adjustment means that the sun over the seasons is slowly moving uh, north in summer and back to the south in winter. And uh, so the direction from that the sun what comes is changing. But this is not uh, moving. So for that we have to adjust the mirror slightly in its angle to the sun. We do this just by looking at the focus. If we see that the sun is a little bit out, we open here, this, and then we have a lever, and you see, the thing is moving, bending. Yes. So by doing so, we can see after two, three days, we'll see that half of the light is outside of the focus. And then by opening here and doing this adjustment, we get that half back into the focus. Right. So and you that is uh, changing the shape, actually, and the, ref uh, and the inclination of this large reflector. So you have a tracking system that's tracking, but you also keep an eye on where the focal point is. And if you see it slightly off, you can just adjust it slightly to get it back on track. Okay, there are two things. The tracking is taking care of the earth rotation during yeah. one day. This is this movement. Yeah, yeah. And so that is not... Uh, and this is seasonal. This is automatic. Yeah. And that uh, during a day you don't have to do anything. Uh -huh. Then after some days you will notice that the light is slightly off. That we call the seasonal movement of the sun, yeah. which is taking take place over many days. Mm. And then you see it, some light is off, and only mm. then, once in a, after a few days, you have to do this type of adjustment. Right, right. A little bit, and then lock it again. If it's after some days, this will touch here. Then you have mm. to open this and yeah. go for the next. Right. This and is just to make it easy, so that you don't have to use too much force. Good. And then, and, and this is just a matter of looking at where the focal point is yes. and, and matching it up. So th there's no calculations involved, right. there's no complicated uh, machinery. You just simply open the thing and, and, and move it around until the white exactly. spot hits the reflector. Anyone can do that. Yes, and you do it here yeah. and then there is the second one on the upper side. Right. So both you have to do. Okay. And this frame, um, this is all just normal welding technology, nothing too complicated in there? Yeah, if you take a detail here, you can see that it's just very normal welding technology. So this is just, this is no different from welding up a gate, for example? A gate or window frame. Just exactly. slightly more different measurements and you have the plans for all of this and you yes. can show the metal workers how to right. build. Yeah. You have to be very accurate, as you see this is a nice curve and mm. it should not go up and down. As yeah. you can imagine, if this goes up and down, the light will do the same, it will yeah. not come to one yeah. small focus. And I see you're missing a few mirrors here. Sometimes they get broken or they drop out. No, this is because of the joint here. Ah, okay. So let's yeah. say you were to lose a few mirrors. It wouldn't matter over, overall because you'd still have all of the others reflecting? You have all of the others and they're also yeah. very easy to replace. Okay. There are different ways of fixing them. Normally we just fix them with wires over the corners so it's very easy to replace mirrors. Right. Great. <laughs> <laughs> So here's the, uh, the baking oven we looked at yesterday, now it's sunny. What's the temperature in there? 230. 230 degrees. And that's a, is that an 8 or a 10 yeah. square? It's 8 square meters. This is 8 square meters. And so it's just set up to automatically track all the time and keep the focal point on the, on the oven. I disturb it. Let's see, it tracks back. There we go. Great. And so you've always got a nice warm oven if you want one. Fun? 
You always have a nice warm oven if you want one. Yeah. And you're just giving it a minor adjustment now for seasonal change. No, for the center, yeah. Just to get the center back on. No, wow. it's more centered. Can't even look at that. <laughs> you need special, special goggles. Yeah, just dark sunglasses are good. Here we see the. Oh, you can see the heat. Wow, you can see the heat coming out. You see the heat haze. I call it heat haze. Heat haze, we call it. Yeah. Wow. That's boiling. It's more than boiling, it's very, very hot. You're very good at metal working. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now Great. We'll go to breakfast. Second breakfast. So here we see a solar tunnel dryer. Maybe you just ask me questions also, yeah. it's easier. So yeah, so let's start at the back here. Um, this is the air intake, isn't it? Air intake with a computer fan uh, of about two, two watts. It's important to have enough airflow so that the temperature is not going above 60 degrees Celsius. Yeah. But depending on what you want to dry, you also yeah. might need higher airflow. And you want the airflow to get the humidity out as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then here you have a panel of 12 watts, 12 yeah. volts and uh, two watt power. 12 volts, two watt panel. Yes, exactly. And you, you can just buy these for a few pounds, a few euros? Right, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. You have to match the panel with the ventilator yeah. and the radiation you normally have. Uh-huh. We prefer if it's even running at low radiation conditions because then it will not get too moist. Even the sun is not shining, but air will be passing through Good. and keep it from getting fungus. So that, that will even operate when there's no direct radiation. It will operate off yeah, of indirect. Little, yeah. Depending so. on how you match the panel with the yeah. ventilator. Good, good. Then if you open here, if you have the plastic cover from greenhouse, ultraviolet resistant, and we can open it, then we see here a section of black surface. This is just wooden. This is just wood painted black and the styrofoam insulation underneath. So there's polystyrene insulation underneath, yeah. And this is a preheating yeah, section. Plastic. Like air will enter cold here, and then yeah. slowly get preheated. And then this is the section where we place the food stuff. We preheat and then here it's absorber plus drying section. The food will also absorb, add some heat and at the same time it will use heat to evaporate the water. So here we have a, about a constant temperature, while here we have an increasing temperature. So, and the, so the drying result is quite even. This is almost the same time it needs as the last one. So this is just plastic garden mesh? Yeah, with a gap so that uh, air can still some, go a yeah. little bit underneath. And this bit here is just the same wood that you just didn't bother painting. Exactly. Because you don't really want paint next to your food. Right. Anyway, it would be different. But the food is covering the area anyway. You talked about the food being a, being an absorber. Do you mean in terms of the thermal mass of the food absorbing the area, some temperature? The food is covering this area, so everything laying here will absorb the light. Ah, so the, the, they will act like a kind of a collector as well. Yes. So yeah. this is also collector, but also the food. So this is a bit of leftover apple. Right. Mm. Very good. Very tasty. And then we can close. We can load it from this side, and then also from the other side. And you can load from both sides. And how long is it? It's uh, 2.2 meters long, this yeah. one, yep. and one meter wide. Great. And what's happening at the other end? Here is, uh, the air is pushed in at this side, and then finally the moist, warm air is coming out from this side. Okay. And we put every mesh so that the insects cannot come in. That yeah. is important. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. And so underneath you've just got the styrofoam yes, yes. at about, what's that, about five centimeters? Five centimeters. Yeah. Easy. Great. Well, we'll have to make one of these. <laughs>